Can employees make millions? In this week's Friday Finances, Jarrett of More Than Blockchain and myself discuss how being in the employee quadrant, a framework from Robert Kiyosaki's book, The Cash Flow Quadrant, can help those of you who are wrestling with being employees and questioning whether or not you're going to achieve your financial goals or financial freedom, how you can use your time as an employee to maximize your financial journey. Enjoy. Hey everybody, this is Grant and Jerry with Friday Finances, and we've been bringing you different ways to approach financial freedom, and we decided to kind of do a little micro approach to, to the cash flow quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to touch on each of the quadrants because we think that it's a great framework, and we also want to know how you can achieve, or at least progress, towards financial freedom in any of the quadrants and, and how you can set yourself up best. So is that cool, Jared? Are we cool with that? Yeah, let's get right in. And just as a shout out to people, we will leave below in the show notes the first episode where we introduce the cash flow quadrant, talk about yeah. why it's so important. And on my thumbnail, it was super clickbaity, but it was like, you know, 99% <laughs> of people don't understand this or they don't know about it. Because I think yeah. once you learn about the cash flow quadrant, which for me was like the theory, excuse me, the practice to the theory that was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is a foundational book for many people in their understanding of money. The cash flow quadrant is kind of really the practical steps that I think one can take to start to figure out how they're going to find financial freedom or just how they're going to feel better about their finances. And so with that, yeah. talk to me a little bit about your experience. Today, we're going to start in the E quadrant. Talk to me about your experience as an employee and how that has you know, shaped and molded your own journey and your financial freedom. Yeah. So today talking about the E quadrant where you're exchanging time for dollars. You know, when I started as an employee, this was not, it was not pre-internet. I, I signed, I mean, I logged into the internet, I think the first time in like 93 or 92 or 93 with AIM chat and but 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 aim chat and netscape and all this stuff we didn't have stars in our eyes we didn't have influencers we we weren't exposed to the body of knowledge so we didn't have these otherness cravings getting a job was normal if i wanted a thing i had to get a job and i knew that early on in fact i mean this goes back to if i wanted like extra money i had to sell my art in the street and if, you know, I, I think my first job that J-O-B, official J-O-B was like at 14. So I actually entered the employee world very early. And then I got serious about financial freedom in, in roughly 2000, 2001, when I realized my brain, I always had problems in the employee quadrant, meaning like I always had ideas and they would always push back and be like, we could do this better like this. And they're like, take a hike. And then in, in about 2000, when someone handed me the book, Think and Grow Rich, I started going on my personal development journey. And in that was this book, Cashflow Quadrant, among others. And so I started thinking, I, I realized I was thinking as an entrepreneur, but that didn't mean I couldn't put stacks away as an employee. So that was kind of my initial journey. What's, what's your initial journey as an employee, your current journey? How does it relate to kind of your financial freedom journey? Yeah, so similar. I had a paper out when I was like 11 or 12. I didn't up know to that. the age of 14, <laughs> when yeah. I could then quote legally work, at least in the United States, it was probably the same for you. Like at 14, that was the that was the year when it was like get out of the house. You're no longer a teenager, right? You're not. You yeah. Know, or sorry, you are a teenager. 13, 14, and I worked at bag groceries. Started bagging groceries. Oh. I eventually got up to the register, and then I worked at this really small supermarket up in Massachusetts. <laughs> Up until the time. And now if you go, the supermarket has been taken over by bespoke burger joint, which is only run by hippies and hipsters. It's a bespoke. You know, it's one of the places where you're going to spend $22 for a cheeseburger, but you know, it's Gouda from like a virgin cow or something. So that was my experience starting as an employee. Even today, I'm still an employee. I work for an international NGO. I work for Mercy Corps. Be very open about that. And so mm -hmm. it's still, and I think, why don't we just flow right into how yeah. we're best leveraging this quadrant to be able to we talk obviously about financial freedom and we can leave the link below to our definition of financial freedom yeah but i just think to be able to feel a little bit better about your finances yeah. you can totally do that as an employee i think it needs a lot more discipline but yeah. you can totally do that some of this goes into budgeting and for me it's like okay i know i'm going to get this much to take home 
And we'll probably get into some of the tax implications in some of the other quadrants because that's really sure. where the game starts to play. But for me, it's like, okay, I get this much to take home. Then this gets into budgeting. And then I'm really trying to figure out how I can get into the other quadrants. Because as we'll go through the quadrants, and this episode is just about quadrant E or the employee quadrant, every quadrant has its pluses and minuses. So one of yeah. the pluses of being an employee is that when you go home on the weekends, you can probably turn your brain off. You don't you have go to think home. about it. Yeah. You go home. You don't have to worry about this cell phone going off or this cell phone going off. You can yeah. just be present. And that's yeah. one of the things that I think is a real beauty of the employee quadrant. Now, yes. there are some, there are some benefit, there are some, th that, that's a benefit. There are obviously sure. some cons. One of them is that your, your, <laughs> your money can't grow exponentially like it can in some of the other quadrants. But for many people, they just want to have their five days of work, two days of rest. And during that rest, they want to do whatever they want to do. They want to follow their hobbies. Maybe they just want to sit on the couch and watch Netflix all day. Maybe they want to go out and walk their dog and not think about what's going on in the stock market as an investor, right? Do I need to balance my portfolio? What's going on with my human capital as I try to manage people as a business owner? Or what's going on with my clients as a self-employed person? So I think that there are definitely some time benefits also to being oh, in yeah. the E quadrant that I don't think are necessarily always, always spoken about. But for me, I take some of that money and then I try to figure out how I can get into the other quadrants and I invest yeah. that money. And if you follow me here and you follow Grant, we have a bunch of other shows, but most of my investments are into, I will put all those shows below. Most of my investments are into cryptocurrency. So I take yeah. my E earnings and I find myself in the I quadrant through my investments in Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. But yeah. Grant, you are no longer in the E quadrant. You have moved out of it. So how oh. would you say <laughs> is the best way to leverage the E quadrant to move into other quadrants or move towards financial freedom or just become more kind of financially secure? I think security is, is a, a, we need to talk about, before we talk about financial freedom, we need to talk about financial security. It's like before you talk about being an influencer and being an entrepreneur and being a business owner, you need to talk about being an employee because there are character elements, character development that has to occur that I actually don't think occur anywhere else in, in any other quadrant like they do as an employee. Putting your ego aside, getting constructive feedback from a team, participating in a team. I think these are critical. And, you know, I entered the workforce early because I had to. And honestly, a lot of my other 90s babies, they did the same thing. It was normal for I had a girlfriend working at the Dairy Queen and I was working at Pier 1 Imports. And I had no direction at the time, but I did have time. I, I, I would sleep in and go surfing all morning and not have to be anywhere, you know, whether it was skipping school or going to school or whatever I was doing at the time. I, I still had that stability. And I was able to put some money away and, and some spending pocket money. But when I started realizing I wanted to do financial freedom, I was starting to get angsty on my job. It felt limiting. But then I realized I can't just ditch my job. I can leverage my job and graduate. And for those listening, I put this in air quotes. I think you need to graduate from the employee quadrant. So before we talk about any other quadrant, though, how do you graduate? Well, you learn what you need to learn. Like if you are under pressure and you're not liking something, there is something you need to learn. It's not like, I hate this and this is crushing my soul. No, you think that because you see people on Instagram going to Iceland and you want to do that too. You, but, but take a pause and ask yourself introspectively, what is this angst? I do want more out of life. Great, that doesn't mean I just quit and go do that. The visual I, I was given once is, it's like Tarzan. You never let go of this vine until you're holding the next vine. You never let go of the E quadrant until you have a good stability. And the best example I have of this is when I was doing my, my first I quadrant, my first investment, I was working as an employee. And it was a, it was a stock option as investment. And you've probably heard me tell the story. I was working in an office and I realized I needed $1,600. This was 2002. I need $1,600 to invest in these stock options well. And I, and I had a mentor for stock options and he was teaching me how to buy stock options for the S&P 500. 
So I got my account up and running. I was super nervous. I made maybe 1600 in an entire month. So here's where the character development came in. I started asking for overtime tasks. Hey, is there any other projects we can do? And I would get in there at my, uh, my official clock in time was 830. I would get there at 630 and start doing these extra projects. And I got permission to do overtime, which was time and a half. So I slowly over time had a savings account. It was nuts. And it took me six months of overtime to save that $1,600. And the story goes, I invested it. In about 30 minutes, I lost it. And this idea of time for money, this was a visceral experience. Now, that's kind of like Grant lost his money. But the real message there is I was able to leverage my E-quadrant job, work a little extra overtime, and pull the dials. The dials are just very stable on that dashboard. Pull the dials. I jump forward another example. We moved to the Dominican Republic with extra money we earned with my Starbucks job. I was working in the E-quadrant at, at Starbucks, and they have this stock investment plan. That's the benefit of E-quadrant. You can stack this up. And I saved about 30 grand and we, and my wife was saved a ton of money. She was working and together we put our money together and we left the second year of marriage and moved to the Dominican Republic with that. We were, we could have, we could have stayed there for years. There was other factors while we came back. Last story on this and then I'll hand the mic back to you. My cousin came to me recently and said, great. I worked in the military. I knew I was going to be a jarhead. I think he was a Marine. I'm pretty sure. I knew I was going to be a Marine. So I went in early. I was 17 or 18. I went in young and I took advantage of of that, I, I eventually got married and life was tough because these military salaries are not big salaries, but he got promoted and he realized, well, I'm living on this lower rank salary and this new rank salary was like a $500 a month raise, which was nuts for this guy. And he's like, but I know how to live small. He's a Tennessee boy. He's a good old boy. Right. And he's like, I could live on what I've been living on. So he created the spread in his E-quadrant job and started taking what you're talking about, this extra time reading books and squirreling this money away into investments. And he wrote it out. He spent 20 years in the military, got out and retired. In that time, there's a whole story arc in which we'll talk about in other quadrants of what he invested in and how he came out on top. But the message for now is you can attain financial stability and financial freedom. If you, by punching a clock, there is nothing disrespectful about that. There's nothing low rung about that. So that's kind of the background on, on my understanding of E Quadrant. I got to tell you, I mean, you've been self-employed, correct? Yep. I still am. It, well, yeah. Cause you're juggling, you're juggling the E Quadrant and the S Quadrant, a bunch of other stuff. There are days when you are a business owner and you're like, I'm going to quit and go work at Hobby Lobby, son, because I could clock out and not deal with other people's emotions. And I know how to side hustle. I can put money away. I've got the discipline. And so I don't know if you've ever, have you had any experiences like that where you're like, I could just freaking like, I mean, you, like when you were working self-employment or have you, have you always juggled both employment and self-employment? No, there was a couple of years where I was just self-employed when I was basically trying to get back into the E quadrant to start get more money that's reliable because when you're in the S quadrant, self-employed quadrant, it yeah. can be peaks and valleys depending Correct. upon your client based work and the season. And so mm -hmm. I actually think this is a really good moment for us to transition Sure. And let's just leave it there with the E quadrant. But I think you've kind of hit the nail on the head. I think you're like, you know, there's no shame in the E quadrant. No and shame. There's a famous YouTuber called Coffeezilla, and he's always saying this. He started out looking at multi-level marketing <laughs> schemes and sure. other get rich schemes. And, you know, when you look at those things, it's like, yeah, that looks sexy. And yeah, it's cool to throw up on Instagram or, or LinkedIn, your CEO, or you're an entrepreneur. But really, 95% of those people don't succeed after five years. So no. like stay in the E quadrant, grow, go up the rank, just do as your, as your, as your cousin did, I believe, squirrel yeah. some money away, take the time on the weekends to learn, excuse me, to learn and, and grow and have to personal learn. development. You can't get much better. You know, mm -hmm. don't spend your, I guess what, it, I guess it just comes down to this is a whole different conversation. But if you're in the E quadrant, maximize your weekends to build yes. the future that you want. Because yes. you have the luxury of a weekend. So yeah. I guess we'll leave it there. And on the next episode, we're going to look mm -hmm. at the S quadrant, which is self-employed. So we Let's will see everyone there. Everything that we've referenced also, there'll be links below on this video. <laughs> so we will see you in the S quadrant. 
Yep. Thanks for visiting us. Friday Finances. We'll see you next time.